Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about how to explain to a non-tech boss. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, uh, Frederick, hi Frederick, how to explain to a non-tech boss that ev even though a functionality is working, it requires extra development time and, re on, and refactoring and testing? Well, uh, here is one of those situations where I usually approach this from two uh, in two ways, uh, depending on the manager that I deal with. Uh, it's easier for you to do this efficiently when you are more mature in your role and you're more confident and things like that. Uh, because of this phenomenon that I've mentioned before, guys, where the, the when you work as a let's call it a true senior, let's just for the sake of argument call it a true senior, uh, you realize that it, it's not just about you knowing how to solve a problem that makes the thing happen. It's also about how well can you present it and make people who are non-technical or other stakeholders re sort of see the rationality behind what you're saying because when you are an expert, people listen more to you. The more junior you are, the more inexperienced you are, the less likely people are to hear you out because they can hear that you are not so confident in your role. You're not confident in yourself. It's the same reason why most people feel more comfortable with a more like an older person when it comes to say leadership or medicine or things like that. Even though that doesn't necessarily mean that they know more, it's just that you get a better feeling from it. It's, it feels secure. And the same thing goes for us software developers, where if you know how to talk the talk and you have mannerisms and a bit of age in some cases as well, it's usually easier for you to make people understand your point. And even if they don't really understand you, they are more likely to trust you. Now, what I usually do in order to make this sort of thing work for me is that this is the first step. You try to basically break it down and try to be a little bit of a a mentor here because it's really important that you just as you would teach as a junior software developer approach a non-technical stakeholder with the same sort of respect where you understand that this is an individual and I think that, that some software developers needs to remember this more than others this is an individual who has a value to this company this is an individual who has uh, who is due respect and this is an individual who may not be a professional software developer will know a lot about tech but they have other qualities and other areas of expertise which they are a function that they are fulfilling it's the same thing when you're teaching a junior or anybody else these people may not be at the same level of skill that you are therefore you have to put things at the level where they can comprehend what you're saying and that they can see the value so an example for me when I teach say a junior I won't try to explain to a junior why it's critical for them, for example, to know how to efficiently structure a um, ACI pipeline, because it is a, they they are not even at the level at that point where they will sort of understand the nuances that are required in order to write, say, playbooks for being on call, or say for how to set up what what, uh, what things to include and exclude from the uh, from the CI pipeline what should be in the stack what should you standardize on these things are extremely complicated topics that become more and more relevant the more experience they get but at their level it's much better for them to just know that here is how we write unit tests for example here is how you should think about structuring your code so that it's easy for you to write tests and so it's easy for you to continue development. Here are some basic libraries and techniques that you can use in order to enhance your, your work experience because it's at their level. And for you, you should do the same thing with the stakeholder. Figure out what's valuable to them at their level. And what they want to hear is that the system is stable. They want to hear that they're, they're because the stakeholders are always on, basically always only going to care about two things, guys. When is it done and does it work? These are the only two things that they really care about. Well, cost, the bit that usually ties into like how fast is it done. I usually bunch those together because time is money and all that stuff. And these are the topics that you have to put everything into, which is what I do every single day. Even at my, even after years and years of working, I do the same thing, and I explain to them very, very basically what are the benefits they're going to gain by doing the refactoring and so forth. 
because when I explained to them that yeah we implemented this feature it's a little bit stable a really good example of uh, of this in action is when you s try out the feature because I'm pretty sure if you try hard enough you're gonna find some bugs with the thing that you just built I can find bugs in basically any system uh, of proficient of uh, large enough size if I know it and then you show them that yeah there are a few things here that are a little bit stable and then you make them aware of that this code was shipped uh, it is working right now but it's a bit of a hassle for us to deal with it and it's likely to break at some point or cause us some issues so it's good for us to sort of treat this with a little bit more respect than we have if that argument that's the first step just to explain to them the situation if that does not work then you have to respect their right to say that yeah I don't think that this is important you might be completely right they might be completely wrong but it is their right to not agree with you so now all you have to do is let the thing burn that's it that's all you have to do because you've done the first thing you have created a, a data point a touch point where you inform them of the situation and the consequences that will come from not less hearing you out and now we have to see if the consequences come it's, bas it's that basic and when you see and then you highlight when things start going wrong and you said yeah we have some issues and so forth because at some point even the technic non-technical boss will uh, be aware of the issues that you have when the bug starts coming in when things keep on breaking when everything takes longer and longer and longer these are things that are going to happen if you are correct about this code because you might be wrong as well not saying that you know you're not looking at your code but I'm saying that it's difficult sometimes to foresee how things are going to go even if you have a good gut feeling about it and so you let the thing burn and this is what I tell people as well this took me a long time to understand guys it's better for you to uh, just take it from me I have been the I told you so guy so many times and it's always turned out to burn my uh, burn me like it just burns you every single time instead of getting angry instead of getting upset that people are not listening to you, the genius that is you and all the things that you are correct about just let them burn their fingers like let the whole thing collapse put yourself in a position that you are always capable you're qualified to take on any job etc etc and have prospects if things start like I like to say if, that if you tell the people on the Titanic that there's an iceberg and they're gonna crash and they don't listen to you go and sit yourself down in the first light in the best lifeboat that you can have put on your life vest preserver or whatever and just sit and wait for the thing to call oh, ideally put that thing in water bring a few people with you if you can but make sure that you are secured because you can't force other people to see the world that you, you do all the time so what I want you to take away from this is that if you have a non-technical boss start by understanding that this person uh, uh, has a value system and put things in terms that they can relate to usually that's gonna be down to as I said time and when it's like uh, does it work cost is a factor as well if you're buying tools or things like that but usually I bunch those together because that is something that they will understand and then you explain to them in the best most professional manner that you can the more mature you are the more secure you in your role you are the more people perceive you to know what you're doing the more the easier this is going to be in the beginning it might be difficult for you but at least try because it's a skill that is going to serve you well when you become more of a profile within like higher ranks of the IT industry and if they don't hear you out if they don't listen to you be fine with that learn how to deal with that and then let things start burning I'm not saying that you should write shitty software just because you didn't get your way don't be immature about the thing but let things collapse because e that's the only way that they will figure it out it's what I like to tell people you know with all these catastrophes we have around the world and so forth people will not care usually until the water is coming in the front door have a great day